Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Well, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce our next speaker today, that is Mr. Wu Fan. Something that you may not know about him is that when he was two years old, he was such a misdeed, a uh, troublemaker, that his neighbor called him Fan Bai Fan, making me the destroyer of peace. That is because he used to tell a story that even a seven years old would believe in. Well, armed with such an extraordinary telling, uh, storytelling skill, today he used it in um, print, um, he used it in preparing the exhibition for the uh, Smithsonian Institute. Is it uh, or, wrong? Uh, it's the uh, Vietnamese American project, and we all know the Smithsonian is the biggest museum institution in the whole world. So the exhibition he's currently working on will be unveiled in D.C. in early next year. So uh, I hope you all have the opportunity to come and see it in D.C. Well, he also uses a storytelling skill in business as well. He is uh, currently the founding father of Spectrum Knowledge, which is a firm that offering consulting service, training, and um, research to uh, government organizations, including Fortune 500 companies. So, um, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mr. Rufan to the stage. Raising your hands because you're all part of our system here, right? 
government, whether it's the university, you know, the university, you're all part of the system anyway, so you can't get out of being out of the system. You know how in college, high school, we all try to be rebels, and that's great, because that's what you should learn. But we also need to understand if you use dollars, you're part of the US economic system, you vote for people like Ms. Chavez, you have to pay your college fee. You're paying people to be here, paying to be part of the system in college right now. And you're applying and hoping you get in. And then if you are in. So I want you to think about that. This is concrete fee. We need to also establish high end relations with those who we perceive as holding the glass ceiling. So I'm going to, first of all, get you to understand what the glass ceiling is. So would anyone really disagree with this statement? This should be a fairly a fair statement that whoever the president of the United States government is, is supposed to be the ideal political leader. Is that a pretty fair statement? Whether it's a Republican, Democrat, independent? Is that pretty fair? Does no one disagree with that? Okay. So this is, will illustrate the last deal. I want you to think about all the past presidents we have, we have had in over 200 years of our country's existence in governmental system. Okay? Think about, imagine, picture all the presidents. Okay. I'm going to ask, we're going to make this little quadrant. You're actually going to move around. That corner's number one. This is number two. That corner's going to be number three. That pillar's number four. The back room's number five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't worry, we'll get there when we get there. Most of you will never make it to level nine. I can always guarantee you. This is why. All right. What has every single president racially did in this country? White, right? Okay. All right. If you are white, you can move to level one right here. Okay, so you have this deck here still, I'm sorry. Thank you. What is your name, sir? 
here, this is one of our VFDs. What? Uh, sorry. What is it? Oh, what is your name, sir? Oh, my name? Uh, what one you want me to pronounce it? Either Lee Sochan or Jim Sochan. Yes, I know this gentleman already. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's one thing, please. Okay, Jim Sochan. Yeah, I know him and his family quite well. Okay, so. Uh, Jesse might have a shot at being president. 
yours. <laughs> okay? It's true. Finally, I mean, there are lots of benefits to a mentor, but I want to give you those two. You can have someone who made a lot of mistakes, and you can learn from their mistakes. Who made a lot of successes, and you can learn from their successes. Otherwise, you're stuck with books. Okay? And you've been making your own mistakes, and it might be too late, you might lose a job, you might not get promoted. And that's why Asians, we don't seek out mentors enough either, okay, in the workplace. We sit at our cubicle and do our job. So we need to get out there as well. And so I want to leave you with that because there's, there's a glass ceiling, but you have to shatter your concrete feet first. You have to go make opportunities for yourself because no one's going to do it for you. Mentors are not going to all come and say, Hi, do you want, do you want me to be your mentor? Hey, they're busy. All of us have work. We all have jobs to do. Why are we going to spend extra time except the nicest, most caring people? And that's small. So think about that in terms of an action. That to shatter the glass ceilings, you need to shatter your concrete feet first. And to shatter the glass ceiling, why don't you get help from those on the other side of the glass ceiling? We typically never talk about that. Get help from the people in power. Go to your political officials. Talk to them. Go to the highest people in the company. You know, I do know the university presidents need, but I'm impressed with just randomly. And you know, they actually send emails back to me sometimes. And I and they actually said me when I was younger. Why? I mean, why not, right? We accepted people into our Smithsonian exhibit. I took our first high school intern. Because you know why he came up to me and said, I want to be an intern in Smithsonian. What I need to do? I said, well, technically, you're not even 18, you can't. But I went to our officials and said, well, we'll bend the rule. But you know what? If he would have read that application on the website or something like that, he would have he said, oh, I'm not eligible, not apply. You see, he breaks the broke the glass ceiling. He networks, and I was defending. That's all three things, and that's a perfect case. Okay? So, with that in mind, all of you are really wonderful that you're here. This is a big step for you. And I'm honored to be here to talk to a bunch of future leaders. Many of you might be my boss one day, you know, if you're a president, if you're something else, a CEO. So, I just want to say, uh, welcome here, and uh, please thank your organizers for doing such a wonderful job.